Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today's Wednesday, October 3rd, 2012. I'm Darko. Thank you for joining me. And in these sets of videos today, we're going to cover geopolitics in the Mideast, mostly um, on Syria, with Syria and Iran. The Anglo-American 1957 secret plan to assassinate the Syrian president is a deja vu. At a time when the British press was still reporting the truth, London's Guardian uh, 27 September 2003 published a detailed report of a 1957 Anglo-American assassination plot directed against the Syrian president with a view to implementing regime change similar to today's war on Syria. What is revealing is that the political assassination of the Syrian president has been on the Anglo-American drawing board for over half a century. The article which reviews the text of the leaked secret document confirms that British Prime Minister Harold Macmillan and President Eisenhower had ordered the assassination of the Syrian head of state. Documents show White House and Number 10 conspired over oil-fueled invasion plan. The state objective of the secret plan entrusted to Britain's secret intelligence service MI6 and the CIA consisted in assassinating the Syrian president together with key political and military figures. It says here that the stated pretext of the Macmillan Eisenhower plan was that Syria was spreading terrorism and preventing the West access to Middle East oil. The 57 plan called for funding of the so-called Free Syrian Committee, equivalent to today's Syrian National Council. It also armed or involved arming the political factions with the paramilitary or other actionist uh, capabilities within Syria. Under the plan, the CIA, together with MI6, uh, would instigate internal uprisings. These internal disturbances in Syria would be triggered throughout or through covert operations and the agency is prepared along with MI6 to attempt to mount minor sabotage and coup de main incidences within Syria working through contacts with individuals. I think this is what they're actually trying to do with Iran right now. They also had an invasion plan envisioned. It said what was lacking from the 1957 plan formulated at the height of the Cold War was a humanitarian R2P envelope. Moreover, in contrast to today's Free Syrian Army, i.e. the foot soldiers of Western Military Alliance, the 1957 Anglo-American plan did not contemplate the recruitment of foreign mercenaries to wage their war. Finishing up, in contrast to the 2011-2012 plan, which supported, is supported by the Arab League with the participation of Saudi Arabia and Qatar in covert ops, the 1957 plan was not carried out due to lack of support by the neighboring Arab countries. The plan was never used chiefly because Syria's Arab neighbors could not be persuaded to take action and an attack from Turkey alone was thought to be unacceptable. Regime change in Damascus was again put forth by the Bush regime in the immediate wake of the assassination of former Lebanese Prime Minister. And President Bush denounced Syria and its ally Iran as outlaw regimes or, you know, like kind of like the axis of evil. Syria. So Syria and Iran deserve no patience from the victims of terror. The British media confirmed in October 2005 that Washington was looking for a pro-Western replacement for Mr. Assad. The Syrian military is forming a new elite force made up of 60,000 fighters, according to a report from the Tar Sass News Agency. The agency cited an expert at the London-based International Strategic Research Institute, so this could, so it could be, you know, some disinfo here, but either way, it's saying Western intelligence has obtained information that the armed security regiments that are made up of Alawi community would be integrated in a division similar to the Iranian Revolutionary Guards. Also, I remember reading recently about Armenian Christians um, and the Syrian government want to use them as um, freedom fighters or just to defend their government, and they, along with a lot of people in Syria, this uh, uh, consensus is they didn't do not really um, exasperated or have a lot of support for um, the Assad government and um, but they're not exactly going to pick up arms and, and start uh, going against them either. They pointed out that the preparation and training of this elite division is being done by Iranian experts in Syria who number around 2,000 and added that we are expecting the number of government forces to double in the coming months which portends a prolongation of the conflict in Syria and provides Assad's government with new prospects. Syria chemical weapons is a great concern, says NATO. And um, that guy's kind of creepy looking. He almost looks like an android or something. Uh, cyborg. It says here, Syria's chemical weapons stockpiles are a great concern, but the solution to the conflict there remains political, not military. NATO head Anders Fogres Moussin said on Monday. They're saying we don't see a military solution in the Syria, but um, it's basically what they're doing when they're back in... Um, the Free Syrian Army, it's a military solution to get what? 
a political regime change. So it says it remains political, right? That's what they want. Assad out. U.S. wants to repeat Iraqi chemical weapons scenario in Syria. It says here that the Syrian foreign minister said the U.S. wants to oust the Damascus um, administration. See how it goes back and forth with administration and regime by raising fears over its chemical weapons stockpile, creating a scenario similar to which led to the invasion of Iraq. He says this issue is an invention of the American administration. He says these chemical weapons in Syria, if they did exist, and I emphasize if, how is it possible that we would use them against our own people? It's a joke, he said in an interview. So yeah, that's one of the other um, pretexts for going in there is the chemical weapons. If they get in the hands of the terrorists or if they move the chemical weapons out of the hands of the terrorists, either way, they're screwed. It's grounds for you know direct military intervention in that. YouTube video shows McClatchy contributor Austin Tice alive after capture. He's an American freelance journalist in Syria who hasn't communicated with his family since mid-August, is shown alive and in the custody of armed men in a video posted on YouTube. Uh, in the video, he showed blo blindfolded and disoriented mangling an Islamic prayer before crying out, Oh Jesus, masked gunmen who act, act like militant Islamists surrounded him, calling out, God is great, and wearing the baggy traditional outfits of their fighters in Afghanistan. The video was posted Wednesday, but it escaped notice until early Monday when it linked to and appeared on Facebook page appears to support the, superior, the Syrian government of Assad. Kind of makes you think that uh, it was Assad soldiers and forces. Well, when you go all the way down here, it says that the media channel for Assad Syria was um, was the actual name of it. It echoes the government's line that the opposition rebels are terrorists intent on destabilizing Syria. Everything about the video is uncharacteristic of a polished Al-Qaeda group like Nursa. It says it doesn't mean it wasn't them, but there's nothing that points in that direction. So basically they're just trying to cover up the fact that the United States is supporting this. A U.S. journalist going over there uh, being probably beheaded or whatever, tortured by the same people that the U.S. is funding. So, see, that's just dirt on blood on their hands, right? They want to blame it on the Syrian government for all the journalists that are being killed. Uh, like the recent press TV journalist that was uh, shot by a sniper in the head by the same people. Press TV correspondent in occupied Golan Heights gets death threats. The correspondent in the Golan Heights has been receiving death threats for doing his job. And it says here, in one such threat, the voices on the phone said um, that he would be killed for working for an Iranian television and supporting the Syrian government, our correspondent said, adding that his car and office has, has also been vandalized. From today, October 3rd, NATO terrorists mass slaughter civilians in Aleppo, Syria. The Al-Qaeda-style terrorist bombings slaughter and maim scores as Western media spins the war crimes as terrorists targeting government forces. So CNN, in their article, Syria dozens killed and blasted Aleppo Public Square, based this conclusion on a discredited Syrian observatory for human rights, a single man, Rami whatever, who is admittedly a biased member of the so-called Syrian opposition based not in Syria, but in England. And it says here posing as an entire human rights organization. So these claims state that the most of the casualties were government forces, meaning that the remaining victims were indeed civilians. Attacking these public squares populated with civilians uh, using these explosives are made possible at by Western cash, armaments, and political support supplied to sectarian extremist groups starting back to 2007. So lastly, the city of Aleppo has suffered heavily at the hands of the NATO-backed terrorists, entire battalions of which consist of Libyan terrorists, not Syrian freedom fighters, as the Western media attempts to repeat, repeatedly state. They keep still calling it like an uprising and a revolution and stuff like that, and a civil war, but really, like I've said before, it's an incursion or an invasion of all of these uh, foreign terrorists, a lot of them from North Africa and that, uh, to basically carry out this regime change. Then we have secret deals for transferring, why is it? There's secret deals for transferring uh, Al-Qaeda fighters and weapons from Yemen to Syria, so kind of a big deal. Hundreds of Al-Qaeda fighters left Yemen to Syria to join the fight against Al-Sad's forces, says different media sources. Uh, Yemen Observer had to publish a report attributed to Sheikh Tariq as saying that hundreds of Al-Qaeda fighters were transported from the Abayan province in South Yemen to Syria. So here you go, here's kind of like the how the workings, you know, behind the scenes, the mechanisms of this kind of global terror force for hire. Because I remember, I've talked about this before in Yemen, how there was actually South Yemen and they were trying to succeed from the north, because uh, they said that they basically, they didn't agree with their, they didn't uh, honor their agreement, which was they were going to spread all the 
the country's resources to the north and south, which they didn't do. And then, of course, they've been drone bombing the CIA over there in Yemen. And um, and then you have Al Qaeda mixed in a little bit with it too, just like over here there in uh, you know opposition groups, you know Al Qaeda. There's legitimate grievances against these governments, uh, but then you have these extremist elements that come in. Well, that's the that's the globalist backed army of terrorists. The sudden withdrawal of Al Qaeda militants from the two cities in Yemen is connected to a conclusive deal recently made to have groups of armed men reloc relocated to Syria to partake in the war against the Syrian administration. It says that many are jihadist veterans from Iraq, Yemen, and Afghanistan, the same ones that uh, are going to be funded by the West that uh, helped kill U.S. soldiers and Marines. Then next up, we have Al-Qaeda-linked groups admit execution of Syrian soldiers. A shadowy Al-Qaeda-linked group has claimed responsibility for the execution of 20 Syrian soldiers in the city of Aleppo last It says here that earlier in the day, several explosions hit Assad uh, Allah. Uh, square in Aleppo, killing at least 31 people and injuring scores of others. Most attacks and bombings in Syria are blamed on this group. Syria says UN Council members support terrorism. So that Syria's foreign minister accused some UN Security Council members Monday of supporting terrorism in a speech colored by uh, conspiratorial undertones that clearly aimed at the United States and its allies that support Syrian opposition. So, see, they throw in that word conspiracy as if, what? as if it's not happening. That's that's a good cop-out for not having to use your intellect and use logic um, and use facts, right? Things based off reality. You could just say, oh, it's a conspiracy. So then everybody says, oh, if it's a conspiracy, that means that it's not happening. It's just a bunch of kooks. So he says this terrorism, which is externally supported, is accompanied by unprecedented media provocation based on igniting religious extremism sponsored by well-known states in the region. He said some of these states facilitate the flow of arms as money and fighters throughout the borders of some country, neighboring countries. These forces were fabricating a refugee crisis, he said, and inciting, that's for R2P to kick in, rights to protect, and inciting armed groups to intimidate Syrian civilians in border areas and forcing them to flee to neighboring countries like Turkey. Speaking of Turkey, Washington's terrorist claim headquarters has been moved to from Turkey to Syria. Remember, I covered this says here, though, Free Syrian Army claims headquarters in Sy Syria. Were they ousted by Turkey, or are they trying to get bombed to plead for NATO no-fly zone? That's what uh, the question that Webster Tarpley is asking. Go in there, and the links will be posted in YouTube's video description. You can check out that video yourself. Russia is warning NATO against military intervention in Syria. In our contacts with partners in NATO and in the region, we are calling on them not to seek pretext for carrying out a military scenario or to introduce initiatives such as humanitarian corridors or buffer zones, says the foreign minister of uh, Russia. So he's uh, hinting at something as if that's what they're looking at, right? Like we had an agreement you weren't going to go in there militarily, so we would back off. And um, But now they look like they're going to be doing that, trying to get the buffer zone, the uh, humanitarian corridor. We believe both the Syrian and Turkish authorities should exercise maximum restraint in the situation, taking into account the rising number of radicals among the Syrian opposition who can intentionally provoke conflicts on the border. So see, it's all tying together, guys. Egypt considers Qatari plan for military intervention in Syria. We were just talking about Qatari leading the push, right? saying, you know, you're not going to get your weapons there, terrorists, unless you guys start uniting. So it says here, a political advisor to Egypt uh, revealed that Egypt is currently studying the Qatari proposal for an Arab military in intervention in Syria to end the current crisis. So just more proof that uh, Egypt is probably uh, not what you think. It's another puppet state. Turkey's Erdogan unleashing a war of dogs that may return and bite them, says analysts goes on and says, when you unleash the dogs of war, you never know if you or your enemy is going to be bitten. And I think what Mr. Erdogan is doing is by unleashing the dogs that may come back to bite him in the behind, said Ken Stone from Hamilton Coalition to stop the war. He also said he is participating in a war crime against the national sovereignty of Syria, a crime against the United Nations Charter, and he should stop at once supporting the insurgency in Syria. If not for his own country, then he should do it on the behalf of international law and justice. Turkey hits Syrian targets in retaliation for deadly shelling. And there's a good chance that the foreign-backed insurgents or terrorists fighting against the Syrian government are known to be active in these border areas. That's right, they skirmish back over the border. So this is probably part of the plan, right? Moving their bases into Syria to wait to get bombed. Turkey will never leave unanswered provocations by the Syrian regime. NATO's urging an end to the aggressive acts against Turkey. It's also a state sponsor of terror right now. 
Iraq tells Turkey to stop cross-border raids against the Kurds. Today, however, the fighting was inside Turkey as troops say they killed 12 Kurdish militants with no Turkish military casualties. Thank you.